What is our depth capacity? Depth, 5,000 meters and counting. Pressure now, 500 atmospheres. 5,000 tons by square meter? W wow Yes, thanks for that, Trist. I wouldn't think it's a cause for panic. The Ocean Pioneer can hold up to anything up to 1,100 atmospheres. Still, I, I wouldn't want to be out there without a swimsuit. Yes, well, you need more than a swimsuit, or you'd be crushed to a pulp. On approach to the seabed, 1,200 meters. Distance from trench, 10 meters, 5 meters. Think of it, the deepest, darkest, most hospitable place on Earth, 11 k k k k kilometers down into the, the depths of hell it's, it's itself. Oh dear God, Captain. Trist is getting poetic again. <laughs> Trist. Go and check the oxygen meters, will you? You'd have to admit, though, it, it's, it's very impressive. Yes. You could lose anything down there and never find it again. What on earth? I, I don't believe it. What is it? Triss? Captain, you better check the oxygen because I think I'm hallucinating. I think I can see a little hut with police box written on it, perched on the side of a trench. We're heading straight for it. Dodger, can you do something to slow us down or alter course? Negative, Captain, there's no time. We're heading straight for that trench. Hello? Is anybody there? Hello? Well, one thing's for sure. This is not Hyde Park. Put your hands up. Don't shoot, I'm British! Shut up. Now then. If you wouldn't mind explaining how did you come to be inside this box at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean? Oh, well, um, that's rather a long story, and you wouldn't believe me, so let's not waste time, shall we? I might as well ask how you come to be inside a submarine at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. We're on an exploration mission into the Mariana Trench to study tectonic activity and catalogue the indigenous species. This is the Ocean Pioneer, the first one to be precise, seeing as well, we are the first exploratory group. I see. Well, that makes sense, I suppose. Listen, I'm getting a bit uncomfortable with you sticking that pistol in my back, so... How about you put it away? Oh, you'd like that. I would, as a matter of fact, because it would mean I would be able to relax in the thought of knowing you're not about to put a bullet in my back. You'll ruin my suit. I only got it dry cleaned last week. You could be a spy. Oh, rubbish. Would a spy wear clothes such as these? Would he? I beg to differ. Captain, I don't think he is a spy. He asked about the mission. If he was a spy, don't you think you already would have known about that information? I suppose so. All right. But any sign of trouble, I won't hesitate to shoot. Thank you, that's much better. Now let's back up and start from the top. My name's the Doctor, and you are? 
I am Captain Matt Parkinson, mission leader and marine biologist. Matt Parkinson? You've heard of me? Not yet, but I'm sure I'm going to. This is James Dodger. He's our pilot navigator and designer of this sub. They call me Jemmy Dodger. Is that because you like Jemmy Dodgers? You guessed it. And this is Tristan McKinnon, our geologist. Hi. Nice to meet you, Tristan. Frogs are fascinating things, aren't they? Well, now, we've all been introduced. I don't suppose you have a room for me, do you? I suppose. I don't have much choice. Given that the alternative is to abandon the mission. All right, Trist, you better show the dodge to the control cabin. I don't mind having to put up with him, but this police box of his is taking up valuable storage space. Stick it in a sample cage and send it up to the surface. Right, Captain? Hmm. I must say that this is all very impressive stuff, Mr. McKinnon. Thank you. To create a submarine this large to withstand such a great pressure differential, how do you manage it? Well, Dodge is the person you need to ask about that. I'm just the rocks person. Ah, Captain Parkinson, Jeremy Dodger. I was just saying about how marvellous your submarine is. It's so cosy. If I had to hazard a guess, I'd say it wasn't made of any normal material. Then you'd be right. It's a carbon nanotude composite. The same stuff that was used on the Great Space Elevator. Oh, of course. Well, that don't make sense, of course. Could I have some quiet, please, for a moment? I'm trying to listen. Ocean Pioneer calling Ocean Battalion. Do you read me? Over. Repeat. Ocean Pioneer calling Ocean Battalion. Do you read me? Over. Nothing. Something must be wrong with the connection. Would you mind if I have a look? No, thank you, Doctor. It's all right, really. The signal does this sometimes, just cuts out unexplainedly. It's annoying, but it's just one of those things that happens. Do you often lose contact like this? No, not often. Hmm. You don't seem particularly concerned at all. This vessel is entirely self-sufficient. If all fails, we can just return to the surface when our time's up and contact by conventional radio. But until then, you're completely cut off. Yes. Just wanted to let Captain Bromler know that we've sent your blue box up to it. What? It was taking up storage space, so we stuck it in a sample cage and- You sent my TARDIS up to the surface! Don't worry. It won't be damaged. That's not what concerns me. Captain, you've got to get it sent back here now. Can't do that, I'm afraid. The action has already been done. Captain Parkinson, please try to understand. Without the TARDIS, I have no way of leaving this submarine, and with the radio down, we have no way of calling for help. What's there to worry about, Doctor? There's nothing down here that can possibly harm us. Famous last words, Dr. Parkinson. Famous last words. Depth now 9,000 meters. Are anyone's ears popping? Mine are. Still hoping you're a hallucination, Doctor. Well, that would make things make much more sense, wouldn't it, Captain? Oh, God! This is amazing! Look at that! I mean, it's extraordinary! It's like a mountain range, but underwater. And yet every peak is so sheared and jagged, it's nothing like any place on Earth I've seen before. It does have a kind of gothic quality to it, I suppose. Hang on. Are those... Yes, I think they are. What? What is it? What do you see? Lights down there. Pulsing, flickering lights. By gosh, you're right. Take us a little bit closer, could you, Dodger? Oh, look! Fish! I didn't expect to see anything like fish at this depth. I mean, granted, the ocean is their natural habitat, but you shouldn't really get fish where we are. They don't go this far down to this area of the seabed. Do you think they could be some form of new species, Captain? Well, they have to be. I haven't seen anything quite like them. Their high visibility is what interests me. See? That yellow glow they give off. Yes. And they look beautiful. It's as if they're 
using their lights to signal to each other. If only there was some way we could make out what they were talking about. There is. What do you mean? Doctor? What do you mean? Well, if I had to hazard a guess, the sensors in the submarine radio emitters could be able to work out what the fish are saying through symbolic logic. It's within the capability of this computer to interpret their language into English for us. Symbolic what now? Symbolic logic, or in your case, a higher term of advanced mathematics. The computer can do it, just as long as you tell it what you want it to do. And what makes you think that it's going to work? I don't. But it's certainly worth a try. This is ridiculous. You can't possibly know what these lights mean. I never said anything about knowing what they meant, Captain Parkinson. I suggested we could use a way to find out what they mean. Of course, if you don't want to, I understand. But for fish to be able to communicate using symbolic logic, that would mean they'd have to be intelligent. Yes, well, more than that, they'd have to be super intelligent. Far more advanced than human intelligence, for sure. Or else, why not just fry them up now and serve them with chips? Super intelligent fish. This day just keeps getting better and better. Yes, well, you'd have to agree. At least it's worth a try, wouldn't you? I'm up for it. Me too. Captain. All right. You may try it. Under supervision. I was about to say I'd need Dodger's help regardless. What do you want me to do? Enter your passcode. Now then. Which button operates the radio link? That switch there. Right. Direct it at the surrounding area of the fish, so it's directed at them. Hold on a minute. Now what? Switch on, and they should be able to feed back through the same radio waves, and if programmed properly, the computer should be able to translate what they're saying into English language, and give us the feedback through the auto-tape machine. What does it say? It's a communicated message directed at this craft. It's a warning. A warning. The fish say, turn back, return to the surface, return to daylight. Oh, this is ridiculous. No more ridiculous than finding a police box at the bottom of the ocean. Anyway, there's more. They say that if we ignore them and decide to carry on, we will all die. Oh, well, that's very cheerful. Doctor. Is there any way that we can communicate with them? Ask them why they want us to go. We could try. If we program what we want to say into the type, we could be able to translate our words through Morse code. You're planning on communicating with fish through Morse code. They are super intelligent, high visibility fish. They should be able to decipher a simple binary signal. No, I'm sorry. This whole thing stops now. I'm not comfortable letting you anywhere near that ship's computer. You disappoint me, Captain Parkinson. I would have thought you of all people should have wanted to be the first scientist to communicate with an another intelligent terrestrial life form. I've studied cephalopods like these for years and I can assure you they are not intelligent. I've studied cephalopods like these for years and I can assure you they are not intelligent. Well, the point is kind of academic because they're moving away. Then maintain our descent, please, Dodger. This mission's only just getting started. Okay, depth 10,000 meters. Hold on, that's strange. What is? There appears to be some light coming from beneath us. More bioluminescence. No, this is a steady glow. Captain, I strongly recommend that we turn back now. The fish sent you a warning for a reason. I am not about to jeopardize this whole mission over some silly facade about fish. Dodger, keep going. What's going on? It's all right. We should be able to tolerate pressures far greater than this. I suggest you check your pressure readings, Dodger. What? This doesn't make sense. The pressure is dropping. Rather rapidly, I might add. What? No, that can't be right. It must be a malfunction. Doesn't look like a malfunction to me. 
Very well. Reduce the rate of descent. No, we can't turn back now. What? You've changed your tune. About a minute ago you were persuading us to turn back. This sub might be able to withstand gradual changes in pressure, but I doubt that it was designed from the pressures from above to be a hundred times greater than the pressure from below. We keep going, or we risk breaking up. A <sighs> hundred times greater? You mean it's more than ten atmospheres? And dropping down to eight, six, five, three? Stabilizing at three. Three? But that's the equivalent of being in 20 meters of water. That's practically a paddling pool. What the hell could cause the external pressure to drop like that? A force field. Force field? A force field, yes. But the question you should ask yourselves is this. We made it through the force field going down. But will we be able to make it going back up again? Depth 1,800 meters. Get away from that computer, Doctor. I'm warning you. Go deeper there, Dodger. I think I saw something. There. Do you see it? Is that... Look. A sunken ship. Oh, marvellous. Where's the buried treasure I hear you're going to ask me next? From the looks of things, the design of the ship seems to date back from the 17th century. What's it doing here? I'd say if it wasn't for the force field, it would have been crumpled up like a tin can, and yet it appears to be virtually intact. And you think the source of the force field, the reason for all this, might be on board that ship? Well, I don't know. But I'd say it's our best place to look, wouldn't you? Okay, Tristan, prepare pressure pod one. We'll send a video cam over there to check it out. There is another option, you know. What? We swim over from the submarine and find a way in and take a look around for ourselves. You're suggesting we swim over there. Well, with the reduced pressure, I don't see why not. You can swim, can't you? Yes, of course I can swim. I just don't understand why you want to go with me. Well, I'm used to dealing with the unknown. I'm experienced in this sort of thing, and I'm a very strong swimmer. And above all that, I'm just interested. Please, I'd really like to help. All right, best get suited up then. All set in there, Doctor, Captain Parkinson. Just checking the oxygen levels on the diving helmets. Okay. Are you ready, Doctor? Oh yes, yes, good to go. Nothing like a refreshing swim. Okay, airlock filling with water. Now. Good luck! This water is awfully cold! This doctor guy, can we trust him? I don't know. He seems to know what he's doing. I'm more concerned about what they're going to find on that ship. Are you alright, Captain? Fine. Just climbing out of the airlock now. Come on, Doctor. Sorry. Do you need me to shut the door behind me, Dodger? No, it's fine. I can do it from here. Closing airlock door now. Doctor, please attach this safety cord to your belt, please. Just in case something happens and either of us have to be reeled back in. That's right. Okay, I'll lead and you stay close to me. Yes, I, I think... Yes, I see them. They're heading towards the ship. Are you ready to follow me in, Doctor? Might it be better if I go first, just in case there's something inside waiting for us? That's precisely the reason why it should be me. I've swum with everything from sharks to killer whales. I've perfectly experienced in this sort of thing. I can handle it. Well, if you insist, okay, you go first. Stay close to me. I want to keep my eye on you. 
Dodger. Come in, Dodger. Dodger. Can you hear me? Yes, Captain. We're about to enter the ship now. Can you see all right on the monitor? Not really. It's pixelated. The camera on your helmet is breaking up. The Doctor and I... Captain? Captain? Can you hear me? Over! Something in the area of the ship must be channeling out the signal somehow. Unable to identify the source of the interference. So, we've completely lost contact with the Doctor and Captain Parkinson. Doctor! Doctor! I don't think he can hear you. There must be something cutting out the radio link, Doctor. Doctor? Over here! It's very interesting! It's a silver coin. Look at the markings. What would you think that suggests? It's an old coin, I don't know. It's a silver nickel. Scratched down to the nub. Part of a pirate's booty, I should think. Pirates? Don't be ridiculous. Well, look around you. This is a pirate ship. And where pirates go, they take their booty and plenty of it. What's a pirate ship doing down here? Well, if we knew that, we wouldn't be looking for clues. That's odd. This door's locked. There's probably something in that room someone doesn't want anyone to see. That's a possibility. Doctor. Oh, um, hello. I don't think we have properly introduced. This is Captain Parkinson and I'm the Doctor. I don't think they look happy. No. What do we do? I think we should move back. Now what? Well, they don't seem in the position to be welcoming towards us. I suggest that we run. However, seeing as we're underwater, I suggest we swim. Swim for dear life. Quick, in here. Are you alright? Fine. What were those things? Ghosts? Ghosts? Yes. They can walk through walls. They're see-through, no shadow, no reflection, they're dead, they're ghosts. Ghosts do not exist. You just saw them for yourself. Two tall, broad, angry ghosts. A captain and a shipmate, I should think. Or his cabin boy, I don't know. Do you think there are any more of them? I don't know. But we'd better watch out for some. What are we looking for? Hope to find a force field generator. Where do we expect to find something like that in a place like this? Who knows? But I suspect that we raise the shields, we'll be able to leave. Well, if I had to hazard a guess, I would say that the force field is a bubble that prevents anything that comes into it in its path from leaving this area of the sea. The pirate ship must have come into contact with it, and therefore got dragged down into the area of the sea, like we were. It's been sitting on the seabed ever since. What makes you think that? Because it happened to us. So we're trapped at the bottom of the ocean. Well, I wouldn't say that. We can find a way out of this. How exactly? We find out who is responsible for creating the force field and we find a way to release ourselves from it in order to return to the surface safely. Well, that's easier said than done. We can't even contact the sub. I think it's safe to move out now. Just swim away very slowly and very quietly. Where are we going? Back to the sub? No. We're going to find the force field generator. Where do you find something like that in a place like this? I'd start at the bottom. What do you mean? I'll explain later. We've lost contact for some time. Test. 
I'm starting to get worried. I mean, what if they never come back? It'll be fine. Uh, for all we know, uh, they're heading back to us right now. What was that? I think we're tilting this way. I can feel this from side. There's something moving out there. Dodger. Why is the room filling up with... Well, water? Are you alright? Fine. I'm alright. Look at the sub. It's gone down. What are we going to do now? I'm more worried about us. We're stuck down here. We can't move and our oxygen is starting to run out. In two hours or so, we, we won't be able to breathe. Well, right, we um, we need to try and start this thing, get it going somehow. But how? We're stuck at the bottom of this trench. The engines are jammed. We can't get out. Look, I think I see something coming. It's it's those fish again, the super intelligent ones. Wait a minute, Trist. Making a sign to tell us something. What are they saying? Go, 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 go up. Go up, whatever that means. Go up. What does that mean? I wonder. Tess, do we have any cutting equipment? I think so. The legs of the sub pod are what are preventing our escape. All we have to do is remove the legs and float slowly upwards. You're right! I think there's an emergency scuba suit in the back. I'll get the cutting gear out. Who'd have thought some super intelligent fish would end up saving our lives? Quite. Anyway, we'll have to move fast. As soon as we start to float, turn the engine on. Right. You ready yet? Almost. Right. Now! Go, Trist! to do the other one. still jammed. I can't stop. Dodger, you're floating too fast. You're floating too fast. Hold on. We've passed this area before. I recognise that formation of rocks. We're going in circles. Ah, oh, got it. Of course, that's the answer. This whole area is a ginormous circle. Therefore, we have stumbled inside a visible barrier. It was a tractor beam, which dragged us down to this level. This whole area is a ginormous spaceship. Something which fell to Earth in around about the time between the 1660s to the 1730s, a period of time where pirates were most successful. So the pirate ship got caught in the tractor beam and has been down here ever since. Yes, but who or what is responsible? Doctor, I think I found something. Something that wasn't there before. It's a doorway. But a doorway to where? I wish I knew. There's only one way to find out, isn't there? 
You're thinking about going in, aren't you? Why not? The fear of the unknown? What rubbish? The unknown fears me. Come on. Captain. What is this place? It looks like the command left a huge spaceship, I can imagine, say around about 21st century. But where's the crew? Hey, this seems like a radio. We can use it to contact the sub. I don't think that would be a good idea. Why not? Because it looks as if that ship has sunk. What? But how? It seems that something, or someone, does not want us to leave this area of the sea. So what can we do? We can check to see if anybody's home. Is that your way of saying, let's take a look around the ship? Well, I wouldn't quite put it like that. However, if you wish to put it in that context, then yes. I suppose that is what... I am saying. I'm not sure what you expect to find. Neither do I. I just hope that Dodger and Tristan are having a better time than we are. Oh, 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 Dodger! Ah, Tristan! I'm trying, I can't see you! Ah, I'm straight ahead. Hold on, I'll shine a light. Yes? Yes, I can see you. Right, okay. Swim towards me. Okay, I'll try. I'll try. I can't. I can't. You're too far. I think the pressure is starting to build up again. It's not much. Not much air left. Come on, Tristan. You can make it. You can make it. No. I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. Sorry, Dodger. Trist. Tristan. Trist. Oh no. Oh no. It's all right. Can you breathe, Mr. Tristan? You're going to be all right. Catch your breath. Where am I? To put it short, we don't know yet. Judging by the architecture, I'd say technology is around about 31st century, I should think. A spaceship, to be precise. But we'll worry about that part later. I'm more concerned about Mr. Dodger floating around in that pod. I'll send him over to us. How are you feeling, Mr. Dodger? Not bad. A bit cold, but I'm fine. So, now that we're all together again, let's sum up our odds. Odds? There are no odds. We're stuck somewhere, and we don't know. We, we don't know what this place is, how it works, or who is here apart from us, if, if there is anybody here. And the supper's gone. We can't radio for help. We're all probably going to die in a matter of hours, possibly minutes. It's hopeless. It's utterly, utterly hopeless. It's utterly hopeless. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Don't panic. Is what we're not going to do. We're not going to panic. What else is there to do? Snap out of it. Now then. It's quite simple what we're going to do. Well, if you wouldn't mind explaining. We find out what's wrong, and we solve it, and then we all go home. Simple. That plan might just be the most simplistic and also clueless thing I've ever heard. You claim to be an expert with loads of experience, but in reality you haven't got a clue as much of what's going on as we do. Well, I didn't say that, Mr. Dodger, you did. We're wasting time. I suggest we check something we should have checked before. What's that? The computer. It's got all the data we could possibly wish to access. It will tell us anything that we want to know. Yes, well, um... 
I was just about to suggest that actually. Right. Access data records since 1660. I don't get it. It's just letters and numbers. If, if we could see a diagram, that might help. Hold on. What's that? Sonic screwdriver. What does it do? Not much, it's just Sonic. There you go. Ah, so here we go. So the ship falls through space, crash lands into the sea, where it has stayed for a considerable number of years, and automatic defense systems activate a force field to guard the ship. The pilot sends out a distress call which is acknowledged by the pirate ship. The pirate ship gets caught in the force field and dragged down into the depths of the ocean. No contact has been made until... until we turned up. See? So what? The pilot just wants to go home? Needs help or what? I have a feeling that the pilot has been missing for a very long time. Then who controls the ship? I asked up to where the crew was. I think this whole thing was a trap. For what? Us. This ship wants us to be its new crew members. An engineer, a dodger, a navigator in Tristan, a commander in the new to Parkinson, and my brains, it all makes sense. What's happening? Security breach. The ship is going to lockdown. What does that mean? It means... If we're about to become the next batch of crew members, and to that we have to be connected to the computer itself. Ah! Duh! What's going on? Ugh. Ah! Oh my god, this hurts so much! Ah! Ah! Oh! You must resist! The computer is scanning your brains. Do not let it turn you into a mindless drone! Ah! Try to think of something else! Uh, I can't! Neither can I! Ah! Uh, ah! Ah! Captain! I got an idea, but you need to help me! What? My stomach! I think I can use it to cause a radio phone interference with the computer system, so confuse it. But, if we're linked up to it, I know, but we have to take that risk. Just do it! Alright, alright. Okay. Ugh, I have a headache. You'll all feel a bit, a bit dizzy now, but don't worry. You'll come around in a few minutes. What did you do, Doctor? I readjusted the sonic amplifiers and my sonic screwdriver to channel out the computer signal to our brains and reversed it back into the computer itself, confusing it. Meaning what? The ship is now fully operational to function on its own as a living, thinking, self-supporting machine. That's incredible. Right. All we have to do now is deactivate the force fields and return to the surface. I know you've been wanting to be reunited with your blue box again, Doctor, so I had a few of my shipmates bring it up to you. Oh, hello, old girl. Hope you're well. Glad to know they didn't scratch the paintwork. So, I suppose this is it. It's goodbye, if that's what you mean. Well, thank you for all your help. Don't mention it. Doctor, what is it you doing in that blue box? I travel about in it. 
I go anywhere and everywhere I like. A bit like me, really. Inspired to see into the unknown. Yeah, I guess so. Well, take care, Captain. I'll be sure to look you up in the history books in the future, or the past. And who knows, I might even meet up with your great-great-great-grandson. I have a what? I've said too much. See ya.